My name's Carly, and I'm going to be guiding us through this uh, 45 minute gentle yoga practice. So I encourage you um, over the next 45 minutes to um, be as comfortable as possible. The purpose of the practice is to simply have an experience, um, especially tuning into what it is that you need, uh, taking what I say as a suggestion. And as we transition throughout the class, ideally finding more and more ease in your breath, in your mind, in your body. I'm coming to you from my practice space and my plant emporium and my yoga studio here in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. I'm really happy to have you joining me here from wherever it is that you are. So why don't we all grab at least one thick folded blanket and get started. You can ignore my skeleton. I was just teaching an anatomy workshop. Don't worry about skeleton. I pulled him out for the anatomy workshop and my tiny little dog, Kitty, who's still relatively new to our home, went bananas. She was like barking and <laughs> just did not appreciate the skeleton. So its name is Carl Strong, if anybody is curious, by the way. So we're gonna get started in a seated shape, which means um, it's kind of sometimes a little bit of like a misnomer to find a comfortable seated shape but I'll encourage you to do the best that you can to do so. Ideally, the hips higher than the knees is how most people will find um, ultimate comfort. So I have a one thick folded blanket beneath me. You could have more than one. You could also be sitting in a chair or on the edge of your couch, for example. I would, however, encourage you to be sitting right up on the top of your thighs and on your hamstrings. So leaning forward, pull back on the fleshy bits of your seat and try to position yourself so that your spine isn't flexed in any particular way. There's no one part of your back that feels more strain than another part of your back. And if that's happening, just shift the shape a little bit. Maybe stretch up a little bit or fold forward a little bit and try to find a place where it feels kind of like your spine is just floating on top of your hips. And then once you've positioned your spine into that shape, maybe try to find a place for your neck to settle where it feels like your head is just floating on top of your shoulders. Not only is this physically relaxing for our body where we're experiencing the least amount of strain, but also it gives us the most potential for breath. So if this feels, um, if you don't yet have like the capacity to hold this for a longer period of time, use some props, gather another blanket or a towel close by, roll it up, bring it right into the part of your back that you're most um, tempted to sort of curve. Use those support systems to help you find this shape. And over time, as your tissues adapt, you'll need the supports less and less and you'll be able to sustain the shape more and more. So like I was saying, in this position, we're at optimal space for us to take full breaths. So you can have your hands resting on your thighs, palms up or palms down. If you'd like, you can take your palms and just place them onto your rib cage out towards the side. And as you breathe in, try to fill your rib cage with breath. So without too much effort, without gasping for air, just allow over the course of a couple of breaths, the breath to come underneath your hands. No need to hurry the breath or gasp for air. Ideally breathing in and out through the nose, silent, soundless, easy breaths.
And then while you continue to breathe in this way, take your hands and just flip them, almost like you're going to put them into your jean pockets. Bring the palms now more towards the back, still up near the rib cage. And as you breathe, try to fill your breath into your hands here. This is actually where the largest lobes of your lungs reside in the back of your body here. Again, without strain, just welcoming the breath underneath your hands. And if it doesn't happen today, know that eventually it's possible for you to find breath in that space. And as we continue to practice as best you can, you can leave your hands there if you want or let them rest again. And as best you can, try to fill your breath around the whole perimeter, the whole dorso 360, all the way around your body as you breathe in and breathe out. Not only does our posture allow for that breath to be possible, but when you can use your diaphragm completely around in that way, we can also support the posture. So let's keep those pillars in mind as like a foundation for this practice. That neutral spine shape where it doesn't really feel like one part of your body is doing any more work or one part of your spine rather is doing any more work than another. And that full breath. With your next inhalation, imagine yourself leaning onto a, a wall that's behind you. And we're going to exhale and just hinge gently over towards one side. So the reason why I say imagine you're on a wall is you want to be conscious you're not folding forward. You're going to kind of stay um, with your shoulders against that wall, the back of the head against that wall. Come back to center on your inhale and on your exhale, other side. So try to keep your spine in that neutral erect shape as you come through center, finding a sideline pose and breathing there for a few breaths if you'd like, in and out as you flow. And I really want to encourage you to move with your breath. So one of the reasons why sometimes people practice yoga with their eyes closed is so that you don't follow along with my rhythm of movement. But instead, when you inhale, you'll come to center. When you exhale, you'll hinge over. Try to stay rooted down in your seat so as you lean to one side, you're not lifting off your bottom. Just easy, gentle flows here. After you've done what feels like an even amount on both sides, you can come back to center. Change the positionings of your legs if you'd like. So if it doesn't feel comfortable in the shape you've chosen, you can choose a different shape. Or if you'd like to give your brain a little bit of a challenge, for example, if you naturally cross with your right leg in front, maybe change to cross with your left leg in front or vice versa. Readjust yourself right onto the base of your sitting bone. So right where the round part of your seat becomes the um, top of your legs. And from there, imagine yourself glued to um, a meter stick behind you. And then we're going to hinge forward slightly. So it sounds like an easy task to do. I'm just going to turn myself sideways to show you. It sounds like an easy task to do. But as you hinge forward, you want to ensure that you're not rounding the spine in any way. And the hinge comes completely from the hip creases. So in your neutral spine, and then hinge forward. Kitty, 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 kitty. Did the girls come home? Hey. Take a breath to lift your heart towards the ceiling and then hinge forward. Kitty, 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 kitty. It's just the kids, honey. They came in the back door, confused her. We're gonna sit up straight on your inhale and hinge again on your exhale. My sweet girl. You're bothering people in the yoga class, huh? Good girl, no barks, please. Now see if you can stay here in this hinged forward position. Lift your heart up and imagine like your belly button is pulling forward to the room in front of you. 
maybe you're kind of pulling on the floor in front of you, or maybe the fingertips move behind and you can push just a little bit. Watch that your neck is also in line with your spine. You want to remember that the neck is, a, is actually a part of your spine, so it ought to stay in the same line as the rest of your spine as opposed to dropping forward or lifting up. After your next big breath in, we'll fold forward. Let yourself round like a turtle shell. Gaze down towards your belly button or your own chin so you can really release the back of the neck. Maybe turn your head a little no and yes to really let that drop. Notice as you compress the front of the body, how much capacity you have to breathe into the back shell of your body. And from here, use your hands to walk up, almost like you're rolling vertebra by vertebra, all the way back up to a seated shape. Just readjust yourself here. Now for the next movement, you might choose to stay seated on your blanket or perhaps you'll slide off of your blanket. It's totally up to you, but we're gonna come to what's called a 90-90 sit or deer pose. So I'll turn slightly so that you can see what this looks like. Essentially, whichever leg is in front, I'll start with my left leg in front, but you don't have to. That leg is in a 90 degree angle. So the knee is in line with my hip and the heel is in line with the knee. And my back leg is doing the same thing. So if you look down, both legs are making like rectangle like shapes. Whichever leg is in front, you might notice that more of your weight is kind of sitting on that seat, which is totally fine. After a couple of breaths in this position, see if you can ground your opposite seat down just a little bit. So see if you can feel your weight equal on both sitting bones or both sides of your seat. As you root down, again, you still might be more on your one leg than the other, which is totally fine. You're going to hinge yourself forward a little bit. So I'm hinging over my front leg. I'm going to turn one more time just so that this is a little more clear visually. Kitty stole my blanket. How dare she? There you go, Bubba. So here's my 90-90 and I'm gonna lean over my front leg. You can lean as much or as little as you'd like. Take an inhale breath and as you exhale, drive down your thigh and your knee of your back foot. See if you can lift your lower leg off the ground, even if it's just a couple centimeters and then lower. So notice how it's just my leg moving in the hip socket as I lift this up and lower down, up and down. I'm feeling a lot of sensation in the actual hip itself when I do this. And if you need more support, you can lean further forward. And if your leg is lifting quite easily, you can come to sit up a little higher. Now, once you've done a few rounds of that with your back leg, we're going to lean back. So now we're leaning away from the front leg, almost like you're just lounging at the beach. Legs are, whoa, legs are still in a 90-90 shape. Take an inhale breath. And as you exhale, you're going to lift the whole front leg off the floor. Lower down, take an inhale. And as you exhale, lift the whole front leg off the floor. And again, the movement is coming from the hips themselves. Inhaling when you're ready. We're going to exhale and lift. Couple more rounds. Maybe you're going to hold there for a few breaths. Ah. 
<laughs> and then lower back down. Now we're going to find the same position on the other side. So when you go to transition to the other side, you can dig down your heels and kind of rotate the legs over to the other side. And just notice for a moment the difference between your two legs. Notice how they're feeling, both compared to before we started and also compared to one another. Now, once again, I tend to like clench my back seat and lift away from that seat. So I'm gonna bring my back leg just a little bit away from my body, create a little space and kind of take a few breaths to just ease into that. See if I can let go of my clench seat, see if I can settle my weight heavily down on the back leg as much as possible. You still might not be equally weighted between the two sides of your seat, but as much as possible, bringing some weight down through that back leg. Now let's find that neutral spine once again. So that spine that's as little curvatures as possible or rather the natural curvatures only. And then we're gonna hinge over that front leg. I can already tell this is gonna be not as much fun. So drive down your back knee and lift that bottom leg. Oh, this hip is not very happy. Take an inhale in my body. Exhale, lift that bottom leg while you breathe. We're always looking for a sensation that's around a six out of 10. So if this feels like nothing for you, come to sit up a little taller. If this feels like nine out of 10 for you, hinge yourself forward a little further. We're gonna keep lifting, maybe holding. You can, The lift of my back leg is, not even perceptible to the naked eye at the moment, but it's happening. Maybe holding. The reason why we're always looking for about a six out of 10 is because that's when we can adapt so we can get stronger or more mobile with the least effect on our, on our fight, flight, freeze nervous system, on our, on our sense of danger or um, threat. Because when the body's in a state of feeling threatened, no adaptation is gonna happen. So now let's come up to sit. You're gonna lean back like we're hanging out on the beach. Keep that spine as neutral as possible. Inhaling breath, here she goes again. And as you exhale, lift your whole front leg off the ground. Inhale, remember you can always come up to sit higher if this is feeling like a less than six out of 10. You can sit lower if it's feeling like more than a six out of 10. Maybe we're gonna hold here. Maybe you're gonna hover and straighten the leg, keep it floating, bend the leg. Maybe you're gonna get a dog crawling all over you and it's going to create a different type of challenge. Ooh, my hips are feeling this. Just one more, make sure you're breathing. Ooh, and then we'll come back down. Move your body for a moment, however it's craving. It's Kitty's favorite time of practice. We're gonna come onto our backs. So this is where I really like to use the folded blanket behind my head. Look out little, little doggy. I, I like to have it behind my um, neck and head because I find without it, my head just drops back really far and creates a sense of compression in the front or in the back of my neck. So if you find your head is dropping back and there's feeling of compression in the back of your neck, try bringing a folded blanket or towel behind your head and neck. If you find your chin is kind of tucked towards your chest, Maybe something that you've brought behind your head is a little too high. So maybe lower whatever it is that's behind your head. From here, I'll invite you to just explore some sort of twisty movements, flowy movements, make some snow angels with your arms, whatever feels comfortable. Find yourself against the floor. The floor can be an amazing, um, counterbalance to the work that we do all day, whether that's seated or standing. It really gives our bodies the opportunity to have this different perspective with gravity or different relationship to gravity. <sighs> so as you lie here, notice which parts of your spine are firmly rooted into the floor and which parts feel kind of like they're floating. If you release as much muscle control as possible, you might get a good sense in your own body of where 
the natural curvatures of your spine occur. There's no need to flatten out your back onto the floor. Just root down to the places that feel rooted, breathe into the places that feel spacious, and then find yourself in stillness if you're not already there. For a lot of people, it can feel most comfortable to have the knees bent and the feet to the mat. Maybe that's the same in your case, maybe not. Just experiment with different options for your legs. And then maybe considering in your own practice what it is you're trying to cultivate. Whether that's your practice here on the yoga mat or your practice of being a person out in the world, if there was just one word that came to mind to sort of summarize what it is you need, allowing for that one word to make itself known to you and just trusting the first thing that comes up. If you're seeking for that word and nothing comes to mind, maybe letting that be an indication that your word is silence. And in this position, one that's fairly well supported and fairly still, how can you embody that word? If you need to feel a sense of safety, maybe your palms can come onto your body. If you feel like you need some fluency, maybe you want to rock side to side. If you need some breath, maybe using that space in your breath, in your rib cage rather, to find some more air. Embodying the metaphor of what it is that you need on the mat today or as you exist in the world. Trust that you know what your body needs to be well. From here, I'll invite you to bend your elbows, to place the upper arms on the floor, elbows bent, and your palms, or your fingertips rather, pointed towards the ceiling. Slide the upper arms along the floor until it feels like more than six out of 10 to rest your arms. So if you feel like you have to lift your elbows up, you've probably gone a little too far. If you're feeling pinching or compression in the chest, maybe you've gone too far. Just keep the elbows as close to the side of the body as you need to, letting them open up only when it's appropriate for your movement practice, for your body. And instead of thinking of lifting the elbows up, almost like in the direction of your ears, think of sending the elbows away from one another, your left elbow almost energetically reaching left and your right elbow to the right. Take an inhale breath, keep that arm nice and locked into that 90 degree shape and rotate from your shoulder to bring the left palm closer to the floor. And then coming back up, keeping that arm straight so all the movement is, is happening in the shoulder joint and rotate back so the back of the palm is coming to the floor. Keep your elbow grounded only moving as far as you can comfortably move. And then with your right hand, you're gonna do the same. So palm rotates towards the floor, well, shoulder rotates towards the floor, palm is gonna to reach towards the floor. Coming back up, visualize the movement of the arm in the ball and socket joint of the shoulder so that it's really moving as much as you can in that shoulder socket. Now we'll do both down. Maybe they're moving equally, maybe differently. Both up. Keep those elbows grounded and keep the arms to 90 degrees. Be conscious you're not making a W shape here. Ooh. Keep the rib cage down on the ground. And now we'll do the same thing, but in opposite directions. So left palm down, right back of the hand to the floor and then switch. 
and switch. We'll just do that a couple more times. Try to ensure that it's only the arms moving in the shoulder socket, that the ribs are staying down, that the spine is staying in its shape. And once you've done a couple more rounds of that, just let your arms relax. Maybe the palms are on the belly. Maybe they're resting by your sides. If you're not already there, go ahead and bend your knees, bring your feet to the mat. Just rock yourself a little side to side to ensure that you're feeling as comfortable as possible here. Sometimes people are more comfortable if they bring a little bit of support. Kitty, kitty. Sometimes people are more comfortable if they bring a little support or a folded blanket underneath their hips to lift their hips a little higher. Know that that's always an option. And now, just like we were moving just the arm in the shoulder socket, here we're going to try to move the leg in the hip socket. So visualize your leg bones coming down and plugging into the hips like a ball in a baseball mitt, a ball and socket joint. Notice your weight um, grounded down on the back of your seat on what's called the sacrum. So the space where the, the round part of your seat becomes the flat part of your low back, that's your sacrum, this little landing ground. Leaving your legs in the shape that they're in on an inhale, you're gonna butterfly both legs away from one another. Look out kitty, you're gonna fall. Rolling to the outer edge of the foot. And then as you exhale, both legs back towards each other. So keep your weight grounded in the hips, moving the legs in the hip sockets. Try not to clench your seat. Really, this ought to feel like you're not really sure where the muscles are moving this from. It's just this easy flow out and in. If it feels like a lot of work, just make the movement smaller. If it feels like one leg goes first and then the other, make the movement smaller. Bring your attention a little more to the slower leg. And if you find you're hitting speed bumps, so it's smooth sailing and then it's like chunk, 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 make the movement smaller. You only want to move so far that the legs feel like they're moving fluidly, that you're able to breathe effortlessly. You're not holding the breath. And that the only thing is moving is the legs in the hip socket. You're not tilting your tail or moving your spine. After you've done a couple more rounds of that, let your legs relax where they're comfortable. So people who don't suffer from sciatica, they can feel really comfortable with the feet kind of wide and the knees or the thighs coming in towards each other. Sometimes people feel comfortable with the legs extended. And once again, placing your hands wherever they feel comfortable, on the, on the um, body or alongside your body. And just take note of how you're feeling here. Check in with your breath and the capacity you have to fill that cylindrical core of your body. Check in with your physical body and how it's feeling. Checking in with your mind how fast or slow your thoughts are coming. What could you do here to feel 5% more relaxed? Imagine somebody turns up gravity by just a couple of degrees and all of a sudden you're falling a little bit heavier, sinking down into warm or cool sand a couple of inches deep. Leaving your body 
this relaxed and cradled will take both arms and reach them straight up to the ceiling. So they don't have to be close to one another. You can create as much distance as is needed to feel a sense of ease through the chest. Maybe the hands are in fists. Maybe the fingers are pointed straight up. But keeping those arms locked, let the whole weight of the arm fall onto the shoulders. So you might be able to feel on the left side of your heart, on the back of your body, so against the floor, is the left shoulder blade, this bony protrusion on the left side. And on your right shoulder blade, it's partner. On your right side, rather, it's partner, the right shoulder blade, this bony protrusion to the right of the heart. Without bringing the shoulders up to the ears or down to the hips. See if you can slide the shoulders, left shoulder goes out left, right shoulder goes out right. And the result is that it feels like your hands reach closer to the ceiling and your back, your upper back kind of flattens. And then left shoulder towards your spine, right shoulder towards your spine, it feels kind of like your chest lifts a little bit, like the arms come back towards you. So the shoulder blades move away from the spine. It almost feels like your chest is, is compressing in towards the floor and the arms are finding their highest reach. And then shoulder blades towards one another and the opposite effect, the arms ground down to the floor and the chest is open. We'll do that two more times. Really try to follow this imaginary horizon line that's behind your back so that you're not moving the shoulders up or down as you slide into, into protraction and retraction. And then next time that your shoulders feel grounded down into those shoulder blades, we're going to open the arms away from each other. So feel the shoulder blades moving towards each other, opening the arms out, and then feel the moving away from each other to bring the arms closer towards each other. So now they're sliding left and right along your back. Maybe your palms touch the floor, the tops of your hands touch the floor. Maybe they don't. One of my favorite exercises to do after a long day at the computer or the cross stitch. The next time your arms are outstretched, whether they're touching the floor or not, we're gonna leave them outstretched Bend your elbows to 90 degrees. Bring your thumbs as close to your shoulders as you can. And then straighten the arms out. One more time, bend those elbows so the thumbs move as close to the shoulders as possible. And then reverse in the other direction. Take an inhale as you exhale, drive the chest down, lift those shoulders, or lift the arms rather back up, and then let your hands rest wherever they're comfortable. Now, as you breathe in and out here through the belly, through the ribs, through the back, note that there's a top and a bottom to this cylindrical shape. Creating a floor for your upper body. The diaphragm stretching across your center line, attaching itself to the ribs and the shoulder blades, acting like the first floor. And then its partner, the pelvic floor, down at the basement underneath all of your organs, stretching from your 
pubic bone to your tailbone, from your sitting bone to your sitting bone. So visualizing these two spaces in your body and imagining almost like two parachutes sitting stretched out, or rather trampolines sitting stretched out. As you breathe in all the way around your body in 360, equal air pressure moving downwards, pressing the organ system against the pelvic floor, which in turn contracts, engages, sends everything up slightly, down and up. I'd like you to continue to find this visualization. And I'll let you know when we're finished practicing this final integration pose. So feel free to immerse yourself in the experience. Move all your senses inwards until you hear my voice again. As you continue to rest here, bring your sense of hearing inwards. You're looking outwards for answers, turns inwards. All of your attention and focus for just these next few minutes, turning in towards yourself. And as you breathe here, notice how this practice has the effect of slowing down time.
Listen to the sounds in the room that you're in. The sound of your breath, but also the buzzing of the lights or the computer, the sound of my voice. Maybe you've put on music to play. Maybe you're sharing your room with other people. And then stretch your sense of hearing to the rooms that are around you, beside you, above you, below you. All the while still listening for your own space. Stretch your hearing just a little bit further, really as far as it will stretch, listening to the sounds of the trucks rolling by in the street, of people walking by, of the buzzing lights. And then as you continue to breathe, Bring that sense of hearing from the furthest point possible, slowly back towards yourself, listening back to the space around you, back to the room you're in, back to within your own body. And as you breathe, start to move your body how you're craving, slowly rousing yourself from this state of mindful integration, maybe rocking side to side, maybe stretching out. If you're on your back, eventually rolling to your side and staying there for a breath or two if you need to, to feel grounded here in this moment. Use your hand, maybe kick out with your leg to come up towards seated. Sitting right where we started, back on your blanket. On your um, couch or your chair, if you'd like. And honor the rest of your practice by finding yourself as comfortable as possible here. Checking in just one more time. How are you feeling physically? Notice your breath. Your sense of energy, how fast or slow your thoughts are coming. You're welcome to join me in giving gratitude to those upon whose land we live in practice. Gratitude to those who've brought us the yoga practice and all of our teachers before us. Gratitude to one another for sharing this space and gratitude to yourself for making time for your practice.